today's headlines. The government prepares for the rehabilitation of Marawi City following its liberation from the Maute terrorist group. The Philippines continues to attract foreign investors seeking opportunities in the country. The Department of Transportation hails the delisting of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport from the worst airports in the world. And about 5,000 participants aim for a Guinness World Record as they join Global Handwashing Day in Cotabato City. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The rehabilitation and reconstruction of structures in Marawi City is set to begin as President Rodrigo Duterte declared the city's liberation from the clutches of the mounted terrorist group Tuesday. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, said that with the liberation of Marawi, the small number of the remaining enemy can now be considered a law enforcement matter and does not constitute serious threat to hinder the succeeding phases of national government programs. Año, however, said government troops have yet to clear the city of landmines and other explosives first before proceeding with the rehabilitation works. President Rodrigo Duterte made the declaration during his seventh visit to Marawi City on Tuesday. AFP spokesman Brigadier General Restituto Padilla Jr. said that the declaration was made to pave the way for the start of a full-blown recovery, rehabilitation, and rebuilding effort. The President thanked all our troops for their sacrifice, dedication, and gallantry. He also committed government's assistance to all evacuees and families affected by the conflict. We call on every sector and all our citizenry to help and support the bigger task of rebuilding. Padilla noted that they are still waiting for the assessment of engineers from the Department of Public Works and Highways or DPWH regarding the rebuilding procedure. The national government estimates to spend 50 billion pesos to rehabilitate the war-torn city. Earlier, Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana said the rehabilitation of the city is aimed at repairing and ensuring that all infrastructures, bridges, streets, and other facilities are cleared and put in running order as quickly as possible to expedite the rehabilitation of the city, including its business district. Houses not damaged in the fighting will be quickly returned to the evacuees as soon as possible. Budget and Management Secretary Benjamin Diokno assured Marawi City residents that the government has the funds for the area's rehabilitation. In a briefing, the budget chief said authorities have yet to determine the actual rehabilitation cost, but said the DBM has an available 5 billion pesos from the National Risk Reduction Fund for this year. He assured that the national government will not be constrained by funding, adding that the group's that, like the World Bank, has committed to help the rehabilitation. Diokno, who was in the United States last week to attend the annual meetings of the WB and the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, in Washington, D.C., said, WB experts have discussed with the Philippine delegation ways on how to rehabilitate Marawi City. He said among the options cited are the mechanics on the rehabilitation of Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. He pointed out that what the government really needs now is the technical assistance from experts and not primarily funding, citing that under the proposed 2018 national budget, about 10 billion pesos has been allocated for Marawi City's rehabilitation. He also said the government is set to issue its planned Marawi bond in the first quarter of 2018. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana earlier pegged the cost of rebuilding Marawi City at around 100 billion pesos. Diokno, however, said this is yet to be finalized before they would be able to determine the mechanics. China is ready to provide more assistance for the Philippines' post-war rehabilitation and reconstruction efforts in Marawi City. 
Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Liu Kang said, China stands ready to continue providing needed support and assistance in light of the needs of the government of the Philippines. The Chinese official said that China sincerely hopes that the people in Marawi and the Mindanao region can enjoy the peaceful and tranquil life again the soonest possible time. Last June, Chinese ambassador to the Philippines, Zhao Jianhua, handed to Philippine health and social welfare officials a 15 million peso check donation for Marawi City's relief operations and rehabilitation. The presentation of the check was witnessed by President Rodrigo Duterte, whose foreign policy has led to the revival of Chinese-Philippine relations. At least 50 billion pesos will be needed to rehabilitate Marawi City, ravaged by five months of battle between government forces and the terrorists. Public Works and Highway Secretary Mark Villar announced on Tuesday that China has also donated 47 sets of heavy equipment which will be used for the reconstruction of Marawi City. Villar, who was part of the President Duterte's economic team that recently visited China, said seven more equipment are expected to arrive through China's emergency humanitarian assistance. Transport officials welcome Ninoy Aquino International Airport's exclusion from the list of the worst airports in the world. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugades said the delisting, however, means that they have to work even harder. Tugades said this development is just the beginning of more improvements as he reminded DOTR employees not to be complacent as there are many things yet to be done and improved at Binaia. Meanwhile, Manila International Airport Authority or MIA General Manager Ed Monreal said such a feat is a fruit of their hard work. In a survey released by the Guide to Sleeping in Airports in October 2016, NAIA placed fifth in the list of the world's worst airports. Prior to this, NAIA earned the world's worst airport title from 2011 to 2013. In 2014, it landed in the fourth place. It was not included in the top 10 worst airports in the world in 2015, but landed eighth worst airport in Asia. The negative impression was attributed to the issue of Laglagbala, which was among the main complaints of travelers, especially by OFWs, but was addressed during the first 100 days of the Duterte administration. Meanwhile, four Philippine airports again joined the list of the top 25 best airports in Asia for this year 2017. They are Iloilo International Airport, Mactan Cebu International Airport, Davao International Airport, and Clark International Airport. Several reforms have also been implemented in the NIA since last year. Since the start of the Duterte administration, there has been no single incident of a passenger missing a flight for possessing a bullet. President Rodrigo Duterte stressed Tuesday night that jeepney drivers and operators must comply with the government's public utility vehicle modernization program which will rebound to the benefit and safety of the riding public. The President also warned the Pinagaisang Samahan ng mga Superat Operator Nationwide or Piston that he would drag away its members' jeepneys if they would continue to defy the government. He said he was giving them until the end of the year to comply with the PUV modernization program. The president pointed out that the law mandates what is good for the people, especially when it concerns public health and interest. The chief executive started, cited rather the public transport modernization program as one of his administration's projects that will benefit the Filipinos. Under the PUV modernization program, jeepney units that are at least 15 years old will be replaced with units having Euro 4 engines or electrically powered engines with solar panels for roofs. This will also be equipped with closed circuit television or CCTV cameras, a GPS navigation system, an automatic fare collection system, speed limiters, dashboard cameras, and Wi Fi. It's time that martial law is lifted in Mindanao. After the death of the leaders of the Marawi siege, it will take some time for their group to recover, to gain strength again. Lifting martial law is a way of telling people this is really over and that the government 
is in full control. Para sa atin, hindi, na, hindi po muna i-lift uh, yung martial law sa Mindanao kasi uh, meron pa natitirang mga, mga membro or multi-group sa Mindanao. Mindanao. You leave that to the experts. Ang mga hatag sa rekomendasyon ang the military, especially the, Filip the armed forces of the Philippines, the intelligence officers, the defense secretary. Still to come, the Russian ambassador to the Philippines seeks to promote Coron Palawan as a tourist destination. The Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency arrests a surgeon and a government official in a drug bust in Davao City. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Cebu Pacific has postponed the launch of its service between Zamboanga City and Sandakan City, Sabah. Cebu Pacific was supposed to fly the route on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays and Sundays weekly starting October 29 this year. It was set to use its fleet of brand new A-Ray da Transporto Regionale aircraft through its subsidiary Sebgo. Sebgo has apologized for the inconvenience caused by the postponement. Cebu Pacific meanwhile says Passengers who booked a flight from Zamboanga to Sandakan and vice versa or a round-trip ticket will be refunded in full. Each passenger will also be given a round-trip travel voucher that they can use for any other short-haul international destination of Cebu Pacific. Cebu Archbishop Emeritus Ricardo Cardinal Vidal died Wednesday after having been hospitalized last October 11 in Cebu City. Cardinal Vidal was pronounced dead at 7.28 this morning at the Perpetual Socor Hospital. He was 86. Dr. René Bulliser, one of the Cardinal's attending physicians and personal friend, confirmed his death after almost an hour of resuscitation efforts by doctors. He said the Cardinal's blood pressure abruptly dropped and doctors tried to resuscitate and revive him for an hour before he finally expired. The country's most senior cardinal was brought to the hospital last October 11 due to fever and shortness of breath but later lost consciousness and remained in coma since then. As of Tuesday, Vidal's condition was stable after dialysis although he was unconscious at the intensive care unit of the hospital. Vidal served as Archbishop of Cebu from 1982 until his retirement in 2011. Pope Francis has appointed Monsignor Rex Ramirez as the new bishop of the Diocese of Naval. In a statement by the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP, the Vatican's nunciature in Manila announced Ramirez's appointment last week. The bishop-elect will be the second bishop of the diocese, which covers Biliran Island and the northwestern part of Leyte. He will succeed Bishop Filomeno Bactol, who is retiring two years after reaching the mandatory retirement age of 75 for prelates. Ramirez played an important role during the visit of Pope Francis to Leyte in 2015 as the second in command of Archbishop John Du. He is currently serving as Rector of the Transfiguration of Our Lord Cathedral. Ilongos working overseas are showing support for the government's plan to establish a bank that serves overseas Filipino workers. In an interview, OFW said they are hoping for an easier way to send money to their families. Some have also expressed plans to set up businesses or acquire dual citizenship and use their earnings at home and in their current countries. The Overseas Workers Welfare Administration in Western Visayas has recorded over 62,000 active members. President Rodrigo Duterte earlier signed Executive Order 44, which calls for the creation of an overseas Filipino bank. The policy bank will provide financial products and services tailored to the needs of overseas Filipinos. President Rodrigo Duterte administered the oath-taking of new members of the administration's party, Partido Democrático Pilipino Lakas ng Bayan or PDP Laban in Camarines Sur. The new members are headed by Governor Miguel Luis Villafuerte. 
thousands of political leaders and supporters from various political camps in Camarines Sur took their oath before President Duterte on Tuesday evening at the Capitol Convention Center in Pili. The president encouraged all of the Bicolano local leaders to begin discussions on federalism in their communities and strengthen efforts against illegal drugs as well as crime and corruption. Duterte inspired and motivated the leaders present to continuously aspire for a progressive and people-centered government. Congressman Luis Raymond Villafuerte expressed their support to the federalism movement, while Governor Migs Villafuerte expressed his sincerest thanks to the president for his unwavering support for the people of Camarines Sur and for personally administering the oath. A medical surgeon and a provincial environment officer from Albay were arrested in a drug bust conducted by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA 11 on Tuesday afternoon in Davao City. The suspects were identified as Dr. Stephen Sotai, a surgeon of the Metro Davao Medical Center, and Benjamin Haraplasan Medel, Chief Provincial Environment and Natural Resources Office Penro of the Department of Natural Resources Regional Office 5 in Legaspi, Albay. The two were caught inside the residence of Thai at number 3 Marigold Street, San Pedro Village, which is a high-end subdivision in Davao City. Medel is in Davao City to attend the seminar. Medel and Thai are fraternity brothers from UP Los Baños. Pedea 11 officer in charge agent Naravi Dukiatan said both are considered high value targets. Thai is the son of the owner of the VS Thai, a wholesale and retail of school supplies. Pedea operatives also confiscated about 5 grams of suspected shabu and 1 grenade from Thai. Pidea 11 legal officer Ben Joseph Tesiorna said Medel and Tai are also tested positive of drug use. Tesiorna said Tai has been under surveillance for his involvement in the illegal drug trade. Tesiorna said Pidea has no information yet if Medel is also a pusher. So it so happens that Medel was in the company of Tai when Pidea operated. According to Tesiorna, the House of Thai has been habitually used as drug den. As per intelligence report, Thai allegedly swapped sex for drugs as part of his modus operandi. Meanwhile, Pidea 11 has recorded 1,094 arrests from January to September this year. This was the result of 908 operations in the same period. Pidea also recorded 1,671 grams of shabu and 6,000 grams of marijuana with an estimated value of 8 million pesos. There are 2,107 cases filed in different courts for violation of the dangerous drugs law. Russian ambassador to the Philippines Igor Kovayev wants to promote the town of Koron in Palawan as a tourism destination among his compatriots. Kovayev, who arrived Tuesday in Koron for a three-day cultural and language training seminar about his country, was accompanied by consuls Denis Karenin and Carmi Garcia and Department of Tourism representatives Gloria Punzalan and Zenaida Potaporchenko. Corona Administrator Jonathan Dabwit said, The visit is another milestone in the municipality's tourism industry as Russia has chosen Koron to be one of its tourism destinations. The DOT held a training today for tourism stakeholders in Koron to learn the culture and language of Russian nationals so they can welcome them better when they visit the place. Koron Mayor Jerry Barakoso considers Kovayev's official visit to a new development to boost their primary industry as Russian tourists comprise the minority of those traveling to the island town. Dabwit said the number of Russian visitors in Koron each year is less than 500 or about 10% of the total tourist arrivals. Kovayev reportedly wants to promote Koron by including it in tour packages that will be marketed in Russia. As a tourism destination in northern Palawan, Koron is now widening its marketing and promotions to increase this year's estimated 300,000 tourist arrivals until December by 10% to 20% in 2018. At least 17 cruise ships are expected to dock and bring tourists to Koron 
in January 2018. Clear the area of uh, any uh, left explosives so that when the people will go there, will not blow up in their face. And then next will be the assessment of the damage and then the rehabilitation will come in. Nandito tayo ngayon sa Barangay Gadungan, sa Marawi City, sa Task Force Trident. Uh, the inspect natin kasama si Secretary Lorenzana ang mga bangkay na maute is nilang happy lang. Ito na, nilipat natin. Ito ang market eh. Sino ito? Si Omar Maute. Si Omar Maute. Omar Maute. Within 24 hours? Yes. Tonight na yan kasi may 2 o'clock na. 2 o'clock ito na. 2 o'clock pala siya na nadali. Na-recover ko na sa 2 o'clock na naman. And then magkakaroon din ng DNA testing? Yes. That's part of the process. Magkakaroon ng DNA testing. Kung kaya sample sa mga. General Galvez, siapa itu mangato? Mangga lepok, mangga multi members nak kesama nila. One, two, three. During dia no di encounter, they are included sana sama mangga nama kita. Pito, pito, balik pito, pito. Pito, terdalawan. Sham, sham balik lagi. We're still, no, we're still juga ada. Merum padun sa battlefield. So mereka tengah tinjau yang mami ya, dia mangga hostages, mostly women. Yun ang nag-stall na natin operations. We, uh -huh. we got delayed because uh -huh. of our... Ito yung mga hostages. Punta, punta mo yung mga hostages nandun sa loob. Ito yung mga hostages. Ay, go lang mag-isa. Oo, ako lang. Papatayin nila pag nagtrabaho daw sa guberno. Bawal daw magtrabaho sa guberno. Sabi nila. Tapos pinatayin nila. Na laman nila na dyan yun. Nag sila nagtrabaho sa construction, pinatay nila, akala namin, akala namin na wala na sila nagbalik. Kas Asan na yung bangkay ng mga asawa mo? Wala na sila makita? Hindi namin nakita kung saan. Kaya natin natin. Hanapin natin, sumakita natin dyan. Baka nabukog na. Kaya nandito kami kay mag-aaral siya sa ano, sa pilot ko. Kaya nandito kami nung May 16, kasi enrollment. Ito po ang nangyari. Hinagasta nila yung anak ko. Ano po? Eh, hindi na ito, ano yung pag-aral niya. Gusto na niya yung mag-aral ng mabuti. Hindi ko si pinag-ano ko siya na hindi siya mag-boyfriend. Kaya siya na ano, sabi niya, bakit ito ang nangyari sa akin, mama? Bakit ganito ang nangyari? Pinagbawalan mo ako. Tapos ito lang ang inabutan ng buhay ko na ganito. Nagkasaan nila ako sa harap niyo. 17 hostages ang nandyan ngayon. At sabi ng isa sa mga nakausap nating hostage, ay meron pang labing walo na natitira sa main battlefield. Salamat kami kay Duterte dahil, dahil hindi siya masamang tao. Kaya namin siya binuto noon nung nanalo siya dahil alam namin na siya ay mabuting tao. At pasensya dahil nung kung may nakita ka mga video na yung mga kasama namin na nakapagsalita ng hindi magaganda, patawarin niyo kami dahil yun lang utos namin, hindi kami makapagsabi sa iyo ng mabubuti, ng mabubuting salita na makakaawa dahil lang sabi nila na huwag kaming magsalita sa iyo na mga mabutig. Gusto lang daw namin sabihin sa iyo na masasama. Kaya wala kaming choice kundi sundin lamang yun. Kaya sana patawarin niyo kami kung meron kaming masamang nasabi sa iyo. Yun lang.
Up next, Cotabato City aims for a Guinness World Record in celebration of Global Hand Washing Day. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. An estimated 5,000 participants, mostly students, joined Tuesday's Global Hand Washing Day celebration in Cotabato City in a bid to enter the Guinness Book of World Records for having the most number of people washing their hands in one event. Amid bad weather on Tuesday, daycare pupils, elementary and high school students, parents and teachers participated in the simultaneous hand-washing activity as Cotabato City established a two-kilometer-long temporary hand-washing facility to vie for the record. The tippy-tap stretched from the frontage of the City Hall area to Cerro Central Elementary School, both situated along Sinsuat Avenue. Non-government organizations, barangay officials, and civic groups also joined the activity. Cotabato City Vice Mayor Graham Dumama commended the efforts of Cotabateños for the successful conduct of the event. City Mayor Francis Cynthia Gianni Sayadi also expressed her support to the activity, declaring that the city government is committed to upholding the rights of the youth to a healthy and sound environment conducive to their overall growth and success. To date, almost all of the daycare centers in the city's 37 barangays have functioning hand-washing facilities for children to use. School teachers are encouraged to promote regular hand-washing routines to the pupils as part of their daily activities. Typhoon Paolo continues to bring rains over most parts of the country as it maintains its strength. Pagasa says Paolo was last seen 765 kilometers east of Giwan, East Samar, packing maximum sustained winds of up to 120 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 145 kilometers per hour. Paolo is moving north-northwest at a speed of 16 kilometers per hour. Scattered, moderate with occasionally heavy rains caused by the typhoon will prevail over Bicol region, eastern Visayas, and Caraga, becoming light to moderate rains over the rest of southern Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Paolo is forecasted to be at the east of Baler Aurora on Thursday morning and on the east of Tugigarao City, Cagayan on Friday. It is expected to leave the Philippine area of responsibility or par on Sunday. Meanwhile, the low-pressure area spotted 335 kilometers west-northwest of Puerto Princesa City, Palawan, would bring scattered light to moderate with occasionally heavy rains over the province. Sea travel over the eastern seaboard of Visayas and Mindanao is risky due to the typhoon. Let's take a look at today's headlines. The government prepares for the rehabilitation of Marawi City following its liberation from the Malta terrorist group. The Philippines continues to attract foreign investors seeking opportunities in the country. The Department of Transportation hails the delisting of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport from the worst airports in the world. And about 5,000 participants aim for a Guinness World Record as they join Global Hand Washing Day in Cotabato City. The holidays are coming soon. It's 68 days before Christmas. And that's your daily dose of the hottest news and the latest information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm William Theo. Good day.